protesters pull down National Assembly gate, take over premises. Foreign trained doctors' mass failure worsened Nigeria's manpower crisis. And as usual, we are going to see what made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies as we lift from off the press the headlines. Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on the show this morning. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. We're still very thankful to the government for trying to do what they can to make sure that the uh, hardship that Nigerians are facing is uh, dealt with as best as can be done at this particular moment. We're still are thankful to Governor of Lagos State for slashing the bus fares for BRT. And, um, we also heard he said that 25% will be removed from the fares of the Danford drivers and all that. And we wonder how that is going to be done. Uh, which conductor, as we call them, or Agbero, will listen to you and say 25%? How do you even calculate it? You're going from Iyanowuro to uh, maybe uh, Ojota, or you're going to Oshodi from Iyanowuro, and you're telling the bus driver, uh, Governor said 25% will be removed, and how much is 25% and all that? So we don't really know how effective that will be. Well, we, we know that the BRT is very effective and what all we are calling for now is for the government to flood the streets if if possible with enough buses and to open up more routes for these buses to ply and then make the time longer for these buses to ply these routes it was a very heartwarming thing this morning when i was coming to work as early as five o'clock there were some brt buses already on the road and i like that very much i do hope that they will also close a little bit later so that the people who close late from work can also get that opportunity to get home Today we'll be talking about very, very interesting thing. It's Entrepreneurial Thursday. Uh, unfortunately, one of our very top, uh, okay, one of our very top trendings is that a doctor has died in an elevator crash, and uh, now NMA has declared an indefinite strike. A doctor died, uh, and um, just before we take the details of that. Uh, that story. Let's just see what that um, incident was like. Very disturbing video there. A lot of people were not able to even uh, watch. You know, the story is that um, an elevator has been bad or had been bad for a very long time. And sometimes when you enter the elevator, you'll have to use your hands to close the door and manually operate the elevator. Sometimes the elevator seizes. And this is a building that is up to at least more than five stories. And you're not expected to take the flight of steps all the way. Not everybody can do that, even though it's good enough for exercise. But not everybody can do that. So the elevator should, be, should have been fixed. And for a very, very long time, this elevator has been like that, I'm sure. Uh, as some people are speculating, money must have been voted to repair these. Or even if money has not been voted, they may not have been a very, very uh, conscious effort to make sure that that money was available to make the elevator work. Now, if the management of the hospital had tried their best to make this money available to do the elevator or to work on the elevator, then somebody somewhere was sitting on the money. There is somebody in that chain that may have done or failed to do something that was supposed to be done for this person to, or for this elevator to be worked upon. And it's because of that that a very, very promising doctor has lost her life. 
And the story was that she was doing her housemanship and she was two weeks away from rounding off and becoming independent enough, uh, becoming someone who can contribute to uh, the health system in Nigeria. She studied at Bowen University. That's a private university. That means the parents must have spent a lot of money. She must have been so dedicated. And then she graduated, now doing housemanship. And two weeks to the end, she had to die. Stayed an in an elevator that could have been worked upon, and nobody did anything about it. Negligence in our public institutions is what is costing lives. And this young life has been cut short because of negligence of one person or a group of persons that have not been monitored for a very long time. Because if there's the dedicated money monitoring of people uh, who are supposed to do whatever they are supposed to do, some of these things will not happen. And this particularly strikes me, now that the doctors are talking about going on an indefinite strike because of what is happening, has happened, rather. She was very young, and this elevator just gave in and from the 10th floor or something like that, it came crashing down. And once it got down, it, she couldn't survive it. Even though at the time that it crashed, she was still alive and they tried to revive her and all that because of some of the things that were lacking in the hospital, especially uh, this, uh, there was no blood uh, to infuse into her. It's being reported that even though she survived the fall, it took an hour before she was rescued from the elevator. The elevator, which is the only one in the hospital, had been bad, in a bad shape uh, since 2018. 2018, that's five years now. What has been described by some at the hospital as patchy work was done on the elevator, thus making it a potential debt trap. Now, the Nigerian Medical Association Lagos State Chapter has directed all the doctors working in the three government hospitals on the Lagos Island to begin an indefinite strike over the death of one of its colleagues. The enemy also declared a five-day mourning period in the state and asked doctors in the other government-owned hospitals to scale down activities as a mark of respect for the dead colleague. The hospitals to embark on the indefinite strike are the General Hospital Odin, which is the main hospital that it happened. It is in uh, Lagos Island, Lagos Island Maternity Hospital, Lagos, and the Mass Massey Street Children's Hospital, Lagos. The association said uh, Diaso, that's the name of the doctor, died on Tuesday at the General Hospital Odin, uh, Lagos, after she was trapped in the elevator for more than 40 minutes before she was rescued and there was no blood available to resuscitate her. The enemy made this known at, in, in a press statement signed by State Chairman Dr. Benjamin Olowo Jebutu and Secretary Ismail Ajibowo on Wednesday. And the association, however, demanded an immediate and unbiased investigation into the circumstances surrounding the incident, calling for all those found culpable in the matter, especially the general uh, hospital manager, or general manager of the Lagos State Infrastructure Management Agency, Ms. Adeneke uh, Dekombi, all be brought to justice. Now, this particularly pains me because yesterday a very, very close friend of mine lost her husband. And you know why? Uh, she ha he had an accident and he was taken to so many hospitals and so many of these hospitals that he was taken to didn't have an intensive care unit at all. And some of them did not even accept the, the person, uh, the, the patient, into their hospitals. The only one who wanted to accept, who had an ICU unit, uh, was demanding for five million naira instantly before they can even admit the person into the hospital. And what does that tell you? So in the evening of yesterday, okay, the incident happened, the accident happened the day before yesterday. And in the, not evening, in the afternoon of yesterday, the man died because the family at that particular moment could not raise five million naira. He was not admitted into the hospital. The hospitals, other hospitals, at least they claimed they didn't have an ICU. So we don't know whether they really did have it, but they felt that uh, he may not have the money immediately to pay and all that. So the man died. Now a family has lost someone because of what? The government is not deliberate about health policies. So you go to a hospital, if you cannot raise the money uh, instantly, then you die. Nobody gives any 
nobody, nobody cares because that is what it means. How do you raise five million instantly in this economy to save the life of your loved ones if you cannot go home, buy a plot of land that you can bury the person? You go to Agege or wherever the public cemetery is and buy a space. It's cheaper than five million naira. So our people will be dying every day. And this is, these are just few stories that are coming up. One person died in the elevator <clears throat> in a hospital that had no blood. She was working there as a doctor. Then you think about what other people may be going through. So no blood in the hospital. And whose fault is it? Is it mine? Is it the people who are watching right now? And another person dies because there are no ICUs in hospital. No ICU. And the one that had ICU was charging five million for admission. Then after that, how much will be paid? This hospital was somewhere in Surulere. We may not mention the name here, but it's, it cuts across all, all kinds of hospitals everywhere uh, in Nigeria, not just in Lagos State. You go to a hospital, they give you a bill that you may not be able to pay. If you cannot pay, you stay outside there with your patient. Maybe he dies at the gate. There are so many who have died at the gate because they were not admitted into hospital. Well, if you have suffered this kind of a loss, our hearts go to you. And if you are going to suffer this kind of a loss, our hearts go to you because I don't see something being done in the next one month or in the next two months. And there are happenstances, there are unfortunate happenings that might come up within this period. Let's hope that this administration that has come up, not just the federal government, but the state government, even the local governments, when they begin to function, will look critically at the health sector and make sure that everybody has a chance. If I know that whenever I'm sick or someone in my family is unwell, I can go to the hospital, I can get some uh, treatment, and you know, I don't have to worry about it. I wouldn't be talking with the NLC that everybody needs to earn 200,000. We would not need it because transportation will be there, health will be there, everything that we need will be there, education will be there. We are sure that our children can go to school. Then every other thing that we have, uh, as uh, salary or something will still be something that can sustain us. But now, everybody advises you to have a second stream of income, even though your work does not give you the time to do that, second stream of income. So how do you do that? Because of that, a lot of people resort to cutting corners and doing a lot of things that will give them that second stream of income because the one that they're being paid cannot sustain them in everything or in anything that they want that money to sustain them. So why are we encouraging corruption? Why are we encouraging evil? Anyway, let's leave it at that. We'll take a short break, and uh, when we return, we'll be looking at the headlines and hope that something very gladdening will come out of it. But otherwise, we'll still keep praying that Nigeria will be better. But before we do that, um, we know that uh, Niger, um, there's also has been a coup in Niger. That one is not news anymore. and. Uh, uh, they have opened, they have reopened their borders that were closed with five countries following its recent coup. One week after the military coup in Niger, the new military government has uh, said that the country's land borders were open and airspace with five neighboring countries uh, have also opened. The spokesman for the junta announced this on television uh, on Tuesday evening. The border crossings to Mali, Burkina Faso, Algeria, Libya and Chad were reopened. And he said that also, uh, the junta also appointed new governors for the country's eight regions. And tensions with the 15-member Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, uh, remained. Uh, the junta said Niger Niger's borders with Bene and uh, Nigeria, both ECOWAS members, remained closed for the time being. And on Sunday, ECOWAS issued an, an ultimatum to the coup leaders, demanding that the democratically elected president, Mohamed Bazoum, uh, be released and reinstated within a week. And if not, then the group threatened to take measures that could include the use of force. ECOWAS began a three-day meeting in Nigeria on Wednesday to discuss the way forward. And the members, Burkina Faso and Mali, also are already suspended after earlier military coups had sided with Niger. Uh, meanwhile, France and Italy began evacuating their citizens and others with two planes landing in France and one in Italy. The French planes carried mainly French citizens, but also Germans and several other EU nationals. 
uh, some from the United States, Ethiopia, and elsewhere. And according to French press reports and the French Foreign Ministry, that's what happened. The first flight carried at least 260 people, including 12 babies, uh, out of Niger. Now, what does that tell you, especially the opening of borders? Burkina Faso, uh, it is free. Uh, Mali, it is free. And uh, Chad and all that. It tells you that there is something new that is happening. You remember that in Niger, they were chanting, uh, long live Putin, long live Russia. You know, there's alignment and realignment. And we know also that Mali and Burkina Faso have having been suspended uh, by ECOWAS, is now saying they will lend their full support uh, to Niger. So if there's a confrontation coming from ECOWAS or any other, uh, even a world power, then we know that another, maybe World War III, is going to start from Africa. Because France may be against what is happening there because the, the Nigerian uh, junta has cut ties with France. So whatever was being taken out of Niger to France is no longer there. And France may not be happy about that. And other EU nations may not be happy about that. But some other African countries have said, oh, hey, we are going to support you. And by chanting, uh, long live Putin and Russia, that means there's been an alignment with Russia. So if there is a confrontation, Russia will send in troops. Already, once the coup came on board, the um, independent uh, mercenaries in Russia, you remember the mercenaries in Russia, they were now offering their support that they are going to go all out to fight for Niger. So ECOWAS has to be very careful what kind of decisions they make. I know they want to save face and say, we cannot tolerate this, so we are going to make sure we remove the junta. And like some people have said, they may just be saying this to protect themselves because uh, they're not looking at the issues that are making coups to come into Africa. Why did Mali strike? Why did Burkina Faso strike? Why did Niger strike? Who has asked any question why this is happening before bringing a solution to the issue? Unless, unless we find out what the problem is and try to address it, the results may always remain the same. Let's take that break that we talked about. And when we return, uh, Mr. or Architect Ezekiel Nyaitok will be joining us for Off the Press. Stay with us.